Welcome to my lecture online. Now here is a very challenging problem even for the JE advanced test and a problem that you probably could not do, do in three minutes especially since you first have to read it and try to figure out how to even start on a problem like this. It deals with fluid statics and Newton's laws and the problem reads as follows. A cylindrical tube with its base as shown in the figure is filled with water. It is moving down with a constant acceleration a along a fixed inclined plane with angle theta equals 45 degrees. P1 and P2 are pressures at points 1 and 2 respectively located at the base of the tube. Let beta equals the difference between P1 and P2 divided by rho GD where rho is density of water, d is the inner diameter of the tube, and g is the acceleration due to gravity. Which of the following statements are correct? Notice there's four possibilities, but if you take a closer look, notice that A and B are related to A being G divided by the square root of 2, and C and D are related to A being G over 2. So possibly it's either A or B, and or C or D. All right, so here we have the strange contraption. We have an inclined plane. The angle here, let's call it theta, equals 45 degrees and the tube is sliding down the incline with an acceleration a it's filled with water supposedly the water cannot leak out and as it's accelerating downward notice that the level of the water at the top is not going to be perfectly level now if it was level then you'd have a height difference from the left and the right side notice that you'd have this much greater distance let's call this here delta h delta h and then you can say that the difference in the pressure is equal to rho g times the difference in h, delta h, like this. All right. Now, since this is a 45 degree angle, notice that delta h by necessity would have to equal the diameter of the tube because this side and this side must be equal so you know that delta H equals D so you know that the difference in the pressure therefore has to be rho G D now when you come up here notice we have rho G D in the denominator and the difference in the pressure in the numerator all right now how do we start on this well first of all we have to also realize that if something is accelerating this way with acceleration a then we have an x and a y component so here we have the um, so in this case let's take a equals g divided by the square root of 2 and then here the x component a sub x will be equal to g divided by the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 over 2 because we're dealing with a 45 degree angle this cancels out so you see that a sub x equals g over 2 and then here a sub y then also has to be g over 2. Now that we have that we can figure out what the angle of the water will be at the very top because the angle will change. The faster you accelerate uh, to the right the more the greater an angle you're going to have. So if you make a little triangle right here you will create an angle phi. Now we're going to try to figure out what that angle is and it, you can figure it out by using the same principle but with a string and a mass at the top like this. If you're accelerating to the right, the string will then move to the left and stay there in a stationary position at a certain acceleration a. The greater a is, the greater this angle. So this is the angle phi, which is the same as the angle phi over there. All right, let me get rid of this for a moment. So we have a clean triangle now. So we have to figure out what the relative sides are. Let me get rid of this. And so here the, the force by which the object will be pulled down will be g minus a in the y direction. Now the a in the y direction is equal to g over 2. So this is g minus g over 2. So we have a force or an acceleration downward equal to g over 2. In this direction, that would be the acceleration in the x direction, which is also g over 2. That's the acceleration in the x direction. So we have an acceleration due to gravity diminished by the acceleration in the y direction, and we have the acceleration in the x direction. Notice they're both equal to each other, so the angle phi must therefore be 45 degrees. Well, if this angle is 45 degrees, and this angle here is 45 degrees, because it's the same angle, then you can see that 
these, the plane is parallel to the level of the water, and the height difference between the two, in that case, will be zero. And if the height difference is zero, then the pressure difference is zero. So in that case, we have beta. Oh, that's a terrible looking beta. Let me try that one again. There we go. So that means that beta is equal to P1 minus P2, which is zero because there's no pressure difference, because there's no height difference. If this angle is 45 degrees, that means when A is G over the square root of 2, beta equals zero. A is correct. B is not. All right, that was half the problem. Now the other half is, well, we now let A equals G divided by 2, half the acceleration due to gravity. So we'll draw this triangle again. So we have A, which is now equal to G divided by 2. We have A in the x direction, which is equal to G divided by the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, oh, G over, be careful here. This is G over 2 times the square root of 2 over 2, which is equal to g times the square root of 2 over 4. And of course, if that's acceleration in the x direction, then we have the same acceleration in the y direction. a sub y is equal to g times the square root of 2 over 4. All right, now again, we use this analogy with the string hanging down. So the string, because acceleration to the right, the string is going to move to the left. So that looks like this. And then what we have, the angle phi that we're trying to find. In the vertical direction, acceleration due to gravity g is diminished by the downward acceleration in the y direction, which is g times the square root of 2 over 4, like this. And so I guess we can write this as g times 1 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And then in the horizontal direction, we have a in the x direction is equal to uh, g times the square root of 2 over 4. There we go. Now, this triangle and this triangle are similar triangles. So what I'm going to do now is draw this triangle right here, like so. Okay, this is the angle phi. And we have this side here. I'm going to leave off the g's because we're trying to find the ratio between the two sides. So here we can make this side the square root of 2 over 4. And this side here we can write as 1 minus the square root of 2 over 4. Now this is also equal to the width of the tube, which is equal to d, which is also equal to the delta h. So this is equal to d. All right, so now... What we need to, do is, need to do is we need to find the difference in the height. So now if you continue this tube right here, like this, and we now have this, the, slide, the, uh, the angle of the incline, and the tube, I guess, goes all the way down there. Now notice the extra distance here is equal to d, which is equal to 1 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And over here, we have the extra height this way. So the delta h between this distance and this distance, supposedly this is now smaller than this. And so the difference in the height between 2 and 1, this will be less, this will be more. So you can see that p1 minus p2 will be a positive number. And so essentially we take this distance, that normally would be the extra distance if the water was flat or level at the top, and we have to subtract this distance to get the actual different difference in the height. So delta h in this case is going to be 1 minus the square root of 2 over 4 minus this distance which is the square root of 2 over 4, which is equal to 1 minus 2 times the square root of 2 over 4, and of course the 2 and the 4 cancel, which is 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2. Write that over common denominator. Let's see here, because we're trying to get that. Mm -hmm. Let's see that this is equal to, uh, let's see here, 2, 2, because I'm trying to make it look like that. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Where do I go here? 2, 2, uh, my arithmetic is failing me. Ah, let's, let's, um, 
ah, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to multiply this whole thing by the square root of 2, and I'm going to divide the whole thing by the square root of 2. That is, I think, what I need to do to make it look like that. Let's see if I'm correct. So this would be equal to the square root of 2 minus, well, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2 divided by 2, which is 1 divided by the square root of 2. And this looks exactly like part C. So this is correct, and this cannot be correct. But in other words, when the acceleration downward is g divided by 2, I can find the angle ratio like this, where this side is square root of 2 over 4, this is equal to d, which is 1 minus square root of 2 over 4, which is equal to this, and then the height difference would be this minus this, and then of course we have to manipulate a little bit to make it look like that, and it does indeed look like that, and so the two correct answers are a and c in this case. And I'm sure we took a whole lot longer than three minutes to solve this problem. In a way, that's a bit unfair, don't you think, that they only give you three minutes to do this problem? And then it's easy to make a mistake. It was the first time, and the second time I tried that, in each case, I made a mistake somewhere and had to go back and do it again before I didn't make the mistake and got the correct answer. So, yeah, it's, e it's really easy to make a mistake trying to manipulate all these, these, uh, this arithmetic. How long did we take on this one? Well, we said 11 minutes. So we're 11 minutes now, so minus all the talking that I did, so maybe it took me about 7-8 minutes, but I would be hard-pressed to try and find a solution to this problem.